This is a review session for the exam that's coming up this week, and I want to briefly list the topics that are going to be covered, and then do some example problems that might help you in terms of thinking about studying for them. So the basic topics are listed in the Excel spread in the I'm sorry in the PowerPoint file that I uploaded for today, but I'll start off with the Atwood machine. So the Atwood machine, this is pretty much where we left off after following exam two. That involves a pulley. We have two masses here, M1, M2. And what we were interested in with the Atwood machine was determining the acceleration of both the masses. And we derived the equation for the Atwood machine using Newton's laws. And what we came up with, and hopefully you can follow the logic and rationale for how we came up with this, but what we came up with was that the acceleration of uh, the mass one, which is the lighter one in this case, is going to be, it actually doesn't, it doesn't have to be the lighter one, it's the acceleration of mass one is going to be m2 minus m1 divided by m2 plus m1 times g. Okay, so that's the Atwood machine. Uh, equation. And for instance, if m2 were 3 kilograms and m1 were 2 kilograms, if this were 3 and this were 2 kilograms, then we would expect the acceleration of m2 would be downward uh, and the acceleration of m1 would be upward. So what we would end up with would be a, uh, the acceleration of mass 1 would be 3 minus 2 divided by 3 plus 2 times g which is equal to one-fifth g, or about two meters per second squared. All right, so that would be the acceleration of mass one, and clearly the acceleration of mass two would be the negative of that. That's the Atwood machine. Another topic that we spent a fair bit of time on is the hanging block problem. So I'll say Atwood machine and hanging block. And there's a quiz that was on both of these, and I will or did post the solutions to that quiz on iLearn. The hanging block problem has the mass of a block on a table and the mass of a hanging block. And again, using Newton's laws, we uh, looked at the forces acting on both blocks and determined what the resulting acceleration of both blocks would be by putting the two equations for the two blocks together and solving. And we came up with the acceleration of the block on the table is equal to the mass of the hanging block divided by the mass of the hanging block plus the mass of the block on the table times g. That's going to be the acceleration of the block on the table. And the acceleration of the hanging block we had was that it's going to be uh, downward, so it's negative. It's going to be the negative of the acceleration of the block on the table because they both are connected. So that was those were a couple topics and a couple equations we derived based on those topics. And um, from there, we went on to talk about vectors and vector addition. And so for vectors, there's quite a bit we did. We did the hiker problem primarily. Uh, there will not be any uh, problems involving projectiles on this exam. That will be on the final exam. Um, and, uh, of course, if there's a, a, the, the, you'll have a quiz um, that addresses projectiles uh, following um, next week, I believe, is when we'll do that. But for this exam, the 20-question multiple choice exam, there's going to be a problem, several problems involving vectors. And things you might need to know about vectors is if you have a vector, remember, is something that has both a direction and a size. We're only talking about position vectors in the class up to this point, although velocity can be a vector, as you saw in projectiles. Acceleration and force can all be vectors. But for the vector problems, we're basically looking at position, where you have a, somebody hiking a certain distance, let's say five kilometers, they're hiking it at some angle. From some direction. And let's just say the angle here is theta. And this would be theta is 
in uh, the direction I would call this north of east, where east is this way, north is above, south is down here, and west is here. So this would be five kilometers at an angle theta north of east. And if you wanted to find the x and y components, I call if I call this vector r, I would say rx is equal to r cosine theta, and ry would be equal to r sine theta. And that would be for this angle, uh, and for any vector that lies between here, here and here. And that would be finding those components. So if, for instance, if theta were 30 degrees, and r were, let's say, 4 kilometers, I would multiply 4 kilometers times the cosine of 30 degrees. Make sure that your angle is in degrees. So 4 times 0.866 would give me, uh, actually this is 5 kilometers in the example I used. So 5 times 0.866 would give me uh, 4.33 kilometers. And sine of 30 degrees is, is, two point, is, is a half. So multiplying a half times 5 would give me 2.5 kilometers in the y direction. All right, so that's finding the components of a vector. Now my vector isn't necessarily gonna be just one that lies in this first quadrant here. My vector might lie in another quadrant, like this one. Let's say that my north is here, east is here, south, west. Say my vector lay here, and this is the angle I gave you. Then you could find the x and the y components of this vector. I'm, let's just say that this is 45 degrees. And I'll call this 4 kilometer vector. I'll call this R2. I'll say R2 is 4 kilometers long at an angle of 45 degrees north of west, or 45 degrees, in this case, west of north. If it's 45, it's going to be 45 on both sides. So I could say, okay, ry, r2y is equal to r2, the length of r2, which is 4 kilometers, times the sine of theta, in this case, because the sine would be the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So that's how I'd find the y component. The x component would be equal to r2 cosine theta, but negative. I'd have to put a negative sign in there to reflect the fact that this vector is pointed in the negative x direction. So I account for that in looking at whether the components are positive or negative. So let me just find it in this case. I'd say, okay, r2 is 4 kilometers. Sine of 45 degrees is 0 0.707. So that would give me 2.83 kilometers in the, in the y direction and negative 2.83 kilometers in the x direction. Now let's say I hiked first five kilometers here. That was 30 degrees. Followed by four kilometers here. All right, so this, this is five kilometers long. This is four kilometers long, and this angle here is 45 degrees. I could use my, uh, uh, the calculations I already used to come up with what the sum vector would be. I'll do that in a different color. <clears throat> or a dark black there. That's the sum vector. So, and I'll call that R3. It's the sum of R1 and R2. Alright? So I could figure out R3 by adding the components of R1 and R2, so I could say, okay, R1, R2, R3, the X component, and the Y component of each one. And I'd put the numbers I already calculated in here to determine 
what they're going to be. I'd say, okay, R2x is this one. It's negative 2.83. kilometers. R2y is the 2.83 kilometers. R1x is what I did on the previous page. I have to look at it. I can't remember. 4.33 and 2.5. So this is 4.33. This one here was 2.5 kilometers. All right, so then I add everything up. 4.33 minus 2.83 Oh boy, um, I think that comes out to be 1.5. And 2.5 plus 2.83 comes out to be 4.33. <clears throat> so the, these are the components of the sum vector. And then I would recombine those using Pythagorean's theorem to determine the magnitude. So the length of R3, the length of the vector, is going to be equal to the square root of 1.5 squared plus 4.33 squared. And the angle of R3 is going to be equal to, so the, the, the components here are 1.5 in the x direction, Four point three three in the y direction kilometers. So this is the result that I'd have to use Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean's theorem to determine. This is the angle theta that I'm interested in. Theta is equal to inverse tangent of four point three three divided by one point five. Okay, so you can do the math there, determine the angle. But I would say that that in this case it's going to be north of east, whatever I determine, because this is east and this angle tells me how many degrees north from east I have to go to get to that vector. Okay, so that's a review of the hiker problem in vectors.